Hello, my name is Paul Miners and welcome back to another one of my pipe drive training videos. In this video, I want to show you how you can create a simple email nurture sequence using pipe drives automation features. If you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one on one help with setting up your pipe drive account, training your team and building sales automations like this, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our pipe drive consulting options. Now I could use automation in a number of different ways in my sales process. Maybe I want to follow up once I've sent a quote or a proposal, or maybe if I lose the deal, I want to add the subscriber to some kind of long-term nurture sequence. For this example, I'm gonna start with a really common one that we get uh, as a request from clients all the time, which is when, they create, when you create a new deal in your pipeline, so imagine I've created a new deal here, we want to automatically email the, the contact person on the deal and request that they book a, an introductory or a discovery call. That's the first thing we want them to do is to book a call with us. And if they don't book, we want to send them a couple of reminders uh, to, to get them to book that call. So I'm going to trigger an automation when we create a deal in here. Now, I am going to be using the automation features in Pipedrive, which does require you to have the advanced subscription. So if you're on Essential, you will need to upgrade to at least advanced in order to unlock the workflow builder and uh, triggered automations. So if you're ready to go, you can head on over to the automations tab here. And I'm just going to go ahead and start a new automation. I'm going to rename my automation so I know what the automation is about. And a little naming convention that I like to use is a uh, sort of like the trigger or what what triggers the automation. And then I do a little arrow and then I sort of I list the, the, the action or the automation that I'm doing. So I'm going to say new deal, uh, send email automation. And then maybe in my description here, I'll just say uh, asks, asks the deal contact person to book a call. There we go. Just so that when I'm looking at my automation screen, I can easily see what this automation is about. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my automation with a trigger. And triggers can be all sorts of things like creating or updating activities, creating or updating people and organizations. But for this example, I'm going to use the deal created trigger. Now, because I have multiple pipelines and I don't want this automation running on all of the pipelines for all of the deals that I create, I'm going to put a condition in here now where I say only continue if the deal pipeline is, and then you can see my pipelines here, I only want this automation to run for my sales pipeline. So I'm going to add that condition. So what this means is any deal that I create on a different pipeline that's not the sales pipeline that deal would not satisfy this condition and the automation would not run. So now I'm ready to go ahead and I'm going to add uh, my action. But actually what I'm going to do first, and I need to think about this now, because on my website, what I'm going to do, and I actually do this in my business, is I ask people to book a call with me through Calendly. Calendly is the scheduling tool that I have connected to my Pipedrive account. And if you want to see a separate video about how I've done that, I'm going to link that up here uh, where I show how to connect Calendly to Pipedrive using Zapier. And there's a chance that after they inquire, they might then go ahead and book their call with me straight away. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put in a delay step where I'm going to delay for an hour because they might, like I said, book their call straight away. So I don't want to send the first email follow-up straight away because they might book, and so it's not necessary. So I'm gonna delay for the hour. At the end of the hour, I then need to put in another condition because like I said, I've connected Calendly to my pipe drive. So if the Calendly booking is made, Zapier is then seeing that booking and it's going to go and move the deal and it's going to move the deal to my meeting arranged stage. And I have Zapier automatically doing that for me. Again, I'll link to my video, but if you want to reach out to us and have us build that automation for you, uh, click the link in the description below to learn more. So now that, um, uh, after, now that the hour delay has occurred, I'm going to run my other condition. And this time I'm going to check that the deal stage is... Actually, let's do is not meeting arranged. So again, we need to think about the steps here. If they come to the site, they make the inquiry, they book through Calendly straight away within that first hour, Calendly would move them to meeting arranged. So if they haven't moved to meeting arranged, I then want my automation to continue. So now I can add my action. And actions can be things like creating deals, 
uh, updating deals or contacts, things like that. Or I'm going to use the send email using template option. Now, there is also the option to send an email using an email campaign. This is a slightly different type of email. This is more of a marketing email where I can compose, you know, a branded marketing kind of promotional email and I can use a campaign to send more of a branded email. Uh, that's great for things like nurturing and sending content uh, as my brand. Or in this case, I'm going to use my send email using template option, and that's going to use my connected email account. So I've connected my Google, my Gmail account to Pipedrive. You can also connect your Microsoft account. And so I'm going to use this because it's going to look more personal. It's going to look like I've actually sent the email. Pipedrive is then going to ask me what attributes of the email uh, do I want to specify in this automation. So I want to make sure the email, uh, we're going to have to specify the deal that the email is linked to, um, the person as well, because we're going to need to personalize the email with the person's name. And I want to make sure we have tracking and email signatures and things turned on. So now I can choose who is the recipient of, my, of this email. Uh, I'm going to use the deal contact person email. This is basically the email address of the contact person that's linked to the deal. I can send the email to things like the deal owner, you know, the internal sales rep, or here's a custom field that I can use for this automation, but I'm just gonna use the deal contact person. I can then specify an email template. So I've already written, here's my new inquiry template ready to go. You can see it's customized with the person's name and uh, I've got my booking link to Calendly in here as well. And you can see I do not have a signature at the end, there's no signature. So we're gonna use the new inquiry template. I'm also specifying the deal that this email is linked to because sometimes you can include, I haven't done this here, but you can include fields in your templates that reference deal fields. And I might want to, um, I, I would need to then specify the deal that needs to populate those fields. Same thing for the contact person. So Pipedrive needs to know how are we filling this information, this first name, where are we getting that from? So I have to specify the deal contact person. And because my, my email doesn't have the signature, I'm going to choose to add my signature, which I've set up uh, here in my mail settings. I've added my signature here already. And then I'm going to choose to turn on open and link click tracking. So there we go. So I'm now sending the new inquiry email and that's just going from my connected Gmail account. So that's a nice, nice start. So after the hour delay, assuming they haven't booked their Calendly call, I send that email reminder. Now I'm going to take this a step further. I'm going to add another delay step. And this time I'm going to delay maybe for, let's say three days. And I think skip, skipping weekends is probably a good idea. So I've now delayed for three days. And so I need to do the same check as before, because in that three days, there's a chance they will, hopefully, they'll click the link and they'll book with me through Calendly. And again, Zapier will move the deal for me. So I need to then have this automation check to see if the deal has been updated. So I'm going to check again, the deal stage is not meeting arranged. So it hasn't been moved to my meeting range stage. And also, I, again, you want to think about what are the different scenarios that might occur. Somebody might respond to this email and say, hi, Paul, thanks. I've changed my mind. I don't need any help. In which case, I would probably just mark the deal as lost. So I'm also going to add a condition where I check for the status is not, or actually, let's say, sorry, is open. So the logic here is, if the deal has not been moved to the meeting arranged stage and the deal is still open, I haven't, I haven't lost it, then I want to perform my action. And again, I'm going to send an email using a template. And I'll just do this uh, quickly here for speed. Um, I need to specify the contact person, the email, actually just, just these options are the only ones I need. So this time, uh, same as before, I'm, I'm emailing the contact person on the deal. My template is a different one. I've got this new inquiry follow-up number one. So that's just sort of me nudging them saying, hey, don't forget to book your intro call. Just like before, I'm gonna link this or I'm gonna specify the contact person that we're using to fill the template. And I'm gonna turn on my signature, open tracking and link tracking. There we go. 
So after the three-day delay, if the deal has not been moved to the meeting range stage and it's still open, send the uh, second inquiry or, or second second follow-up. I could repeat this again. Um, I have a third a third one, and so it would just be the same steps as before. I could put in further delays, conditions, and I could repeat the email action again. Or what I'm now going to do is I'm going to do another delay because I'm going to now I want to now update the deal and lose the deal if they don't. Uh, book their call. If I've, you know, I've sent a couple of reminders, they haven't taken any action, I'm just going to lose the deal now. So I'm going to say, right, let's delay for maybe five days, give them a bit of a chance. And just like before, I'm going to have my conditions where if the stage is not meeting arranged and the status of the deal is open, because they, I haven't, I haven't lost the deal at this point in time. They haven't replied to me and said they're not interested. So if after five days they're still in the meeting range stage and it's still open, I'm going to then perform an action, and this time I'm going to update my uh, deal. So I'm going to use the update deal fields option here. And here are all the different attributes on the deal I can update. I can change the title, the value, the stage. Here are all my custom fields. All I need to do is actually update the status. So I'm going to enable that down there. I'm going to tell my automation which deal to update. And there's only one option, which is the deal from my trigger. And then finally, I'm going to mark this as lost. In fact, what I might do as well is let's put in the lost reason would be a good, a good idea. So let's put in um, didn't book introductory call. So I'm going to set my lost reason there. So let's run through this automation one more time so you understand what's happening. So when a deal is created and it's in the sales pipeline, so ignoring all other pipelines, if it's created in my sales pipeline, delay for an hour because they might book straight away, in which case I don't want to email them. And if after the hour the stage is not meeting a range, they didn't book their call, we send my first email, my, my new inquiry template here. There's a further three-day delay, skipping weekends, and if the deal is still in the meeting range stage and it's it's still open, I haven't lost the deal because they didn't reply and say they've changed their mind, I then send a second email using my new inquiry follow-up one template. I then have a, a further five-day delay, skipping weekends, and I check again, is the deal still in the meeting range stage and it's still open? If so, I then lose the deal and it's then going to be uh, it's going to be closed. It's going to disappear on my pipeline. So this is ready to go. And again, I could add to this. I could add in extra activities in here if I want to create an activity to uh, where's my activity. You know, I could create an activity to call if I want to try and call them. Um, but I'm just going to leave this nice and simple for this for this video. Final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this and I'm going to specify this should be triggered by anyone, not just me. So if other people on my team create deals, they would technically trigger this automation. And then I can hit save. So that automation is now running. Now with all the automations you create, I highly recommend doing a live test. So in this case, what I should do is go ahead and create a deal and then check that, you know, after the one hour delay, do I receive the email? leave the deal for three more days and check that you get the response. So that would uh, allow me to check and confirm, you know, do I get the initial email and the follow up? I would then probably also create another deal. I do this both at the start um, where I again, I wait for that one hour delay. And then this time I would update the deal or I'd book the call just to check my automation works. And I want to confirm that I definitely do not receive the second follow up. You know, I'm, I'm confident that I've set it up correctly, but just to be 100% sure, it's important to do these live tests to make sure it works the way you expect. So there we go. That's a nice, simple example of a, a nice, simple email automation. Of course, you can use automation in all different stages of your sales process, whether it's following up on a quote or a proposal, maybe even after you win a deal, you want to send some kind of onboarding sequence to your customers or your clients. If you need help setting up these kinds of automations in your business or maybe connecting Pipedrive with another third-party email automation tool, then again, click the link in the description below to learn more about our consulting options. Thank you very much for listening, and I will see you in the next video.